today we are making roller blinds. <laughs> That's right, I wanted to make some blinds for my she shed. I didn't wanna do curtains, I didn't wanna do anything that was going to collect a lot of dust in case there's a lot of sawdust around here. So I wanted to do roller blinds and it took me a little while to figure out how to do it because it wasn't working out. But in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I did it, why I chose the fabric that I chose, what I'm using for the hardware, and some of the common problems that you might run into. So let's jump into this tutorial right now. And it's hot as heck in here. It's like literally 91 degrees. <laughs> the rods that I'm using for the most part are adjustable and you shouldn't have to need any tools to cut it down. Some of them you may. The ones that I got from Walmart I like because you can just pull off the shade, adjust it to the, you know, the width that you need for your window. Here's the thing, you have to buy your own brackets. For some reason, I don't know why these roller blade, these roller blades, roller blinds <laughs> don't come with hardware. Why do they not come with hardware? Some of them are going to be cardboard. This is the one that I got from Lowe's. And I found out that this actually has cardboard. I don't really want to have to go and start trimming cardboard and all of that. The ones from Walmart, I like. I mean, it's like a curtain rod. You literally just adjust it to where you need. Now you will need to measure the size of your windows just to make sure that you buy the right adjustable roller shade. And then I'll show you in a moment how I'm installing the brackets. But what I did was put the rod up there, adjusted it, and then used that rod to do the measurement for the final piece of fabric that I'm going to be attaching to it. So in my case, from one end of the bar to the other end, it was 35 and a half inches. I wanted to make sure that I had a nice straight edge. So I used a framing square, cut off the selvage edge, and then I lined that up with the edge of the table because I knew this edge of the table was going to be square. And then I trimmed off all the excess. You really want to make sure your fabric has a right angle that you're working from, that it's square, because if not, guess what? your roller shades are going to be crooked. Ask me how I know. <laughs> the first one that I made was definitely crooked. So the finished size was gonna be 35 and a half inches wide, but I wanted an inch on the left and an inch on the right for the seams. So I actually cut it to 37 and a half. And then for the length, I made sure to add probably about six inches at the top so that could roll around. And then for the bottom, added about two, two and a half inches. I'm gonna be using blackout fabric, so I cut that just a little bit smaller because that's gonna be the lining that's attached to the back. I want these to have nice edges, so I folded this in one inch on the left and right side and pressed it, but I'm not folding this in just yet because I want the blackout fabric to be attached to the fabric and then those seams would be folded onto the blackout fabric. I know it sounds kind of confusing, but it's really not. At the top, I used pins to line those fabrics up. And then at the bottom, you'll see that I had just a little bit left over there for the bottom seam. So what I'm doing is I'm actually folding this in one half of an inch, and then I'm folding it again to create a half inch seam. I didn't want to fold the lining fabric too much because I didn't want to leave the edges bulky, if that makes sense. So really the seams are just folded onto the blackout fabric and then just sewn with a half inch seam. I did this for the left and the right side and you'll notice when I get to the bottom that I still have a little bit of fabric there. That's for the bottom seam. So just fold, sew, and then we'll take care of that in just a moment. Now you will use an iron just to press everything out, but at the bottom seam, we're gonna turn that up one half inch. We're gonna press that into place and then fold the rest of that seam onto the blackout fabric. We don't want to fold the blackout fabric into the seam, but we're just gonna fold it up so that it just hits the edge of where that blackout fabric stops. And then once you've pressed it, go ahead and sew it, and then you're done, and you can move on to the next one. Now I made that one without spray adhesive. All of the other ones I made with spray adhesive, and I found that it works a lot better when you secure those two pieces of fabric together because it gives them less opportunity to shift and bunch. The only thing is you should actually work in much smaller sections. Here I'm spraying the whole thing and then trying to put them together. That didn't work too well. <laughs> and it started becoming a little messy because the fabric was not going to lie flat. It was a little messy. So I would say definitely use spray adhesive, work in small sections. And then once you've got one section adhered, then spray the next section and just go in that fashion. That's what I found that actually worked best. 
You'll notice on one end of the rod, there's a pin and the other one is flat. That's the tension right there. You'll need to turn that counterclockwise in order to release the tension because I'll show you how we're gonna set the tension, but remove the vinyl. You can reuse this if you want. I don't plan to. Just pull it off, set it aside, and then we're gonna use some double-sided tape to apply it to this rod. Now on the rod, you'll see that there are some lines, some grooves. You can use this as a guide for lining up your fabric. You don't have to, but you will need some double-sided tape. I definitely prefer putting two pieces of double-sided tape, but the main thing is making sure that you've got your fabric lined up and that this goes onto the rod perfectly straight. The reason why is if you don't line it up on there perfectly well, <laughs> Guess what? Your shade is going to be crooked. It's not going to go up and down properly. Ask me how I know. You'll also notice here there's a kind of a gap between the fabric and the blackout fabric. This is the one that I did not use the spray adhesive. Now you can see why it's beneficial to use the spray adhesive. Anyway, when you're rolling this up, make sure that it's going onto the rod straight. If it's not, just unroll it try to get it on there as straight as possible. And because this is the one that I didn't use spray adhesive, you'll notice the fabric tends to be a little puffy because there's not that adhesion between the two. This is the only one that I did not use spray adhesive and all the other ones I did use spray adhesive. I just didn't record that. <laughs> okay, for the hardware, this is gonna be an inside mount. You can mount this to the inside of your window you can mount it to the outside. Just make sure that the measurements of your fabric accommodate you mounting it to the outside and not the inside. Okay, so you can also do an like uh, an undermount or an overmount. I decided to do the undermount, and so you can see the blackout fabric at the top. I'm okay with that. I just wanted the shade to be a little closer to the window to keep out, you know, the the heat, and in the winter time keep out some of the cold. So here I'm setting the tension for the rod. Remember, we had released all the tension from the rod. So to reset that tension, you have to put it into the brackets, pull it down about 18 inches, and then just keep rolling it up. And what I found is because this is a cheap rod, that I had to set the tension pretty tight. So in order to get it to go up, it's not going to go all the way up, but it is what it is. There is a plastic piece that comes at the bottom to give it some structure. We're going to reuse that. So don't throw that away from your, you know, your cheapy Walmart <laughs> roller shade. And that seam that we sewed at the bottom, this little piece of plastic will go right into that pocket. And then that'll give our roller shades some rigidity at the bottom. So we actually have something to grab onto when we want to pull it up and down. And again, I noticed that I couldn't get this to go all the way up unless I released it and then it just started flipping. But I don't mind. I mean, it fits my needs. And I think as long as it fits my needs and it keeps out the sun and the heat and the cold during the winter, I'm okay with that. But overall, I really like how this turned out and it wasn't too expensive. The fabric was maybe $12 a yard and I spent about $195. So that's only $33 per window. I don't think that's too expensive for these beautiful pops of color in my shed. I love it. Now I still have to make one for the side door that you see there, but I've still got materials left over. So it's not going to cost me anything extra. Now I do have to buy some shades for the skylights. Those leave big hot spots of sunlight during the warmest part of the day. So I most likely will probably buy those shades so that I can just easily open and close them and keep out a lot of that sun during the warmest part of the day. But overall, I love how this looks. It's coming together and it gives a little bit of privacy and a pop of color. All right, guys, if you love this video, please give it a thumbs up. Find me at Thrift Diving on Instagram and I will see you next video. Come back because there's more taking place in my she shed. I'll see you next video.